afternoon, everyone. We'll be getting started in a few minutes. Meanwhile, you can go ahead, hit that link, and enter yourself in for today's giveaways. Looks like it's one o'clock. Hey there, LaRocca. Time for us to get started. So we are building from the Lego Botanical Collection, the lovely bonsai tree. Uh, this set is kind of near and dear, I feel like, to a lot of BZ Power members' hearts. Um, since one of the designers was Nicholas Voss, who is a BZ Power member, goes by Brick Thing Online, and, uh, you know, I like to think he got to start on BC Power before he ended up in Billen designing awesome sets like this in Ninjago City. Um, this one's been on my radar for a while. Even if he hadn't designed it, I think it's still a really cool looking set. Um, great display piece and uh, looking, looking forward to that. Um, it's quite interesting, right, because you have like a very architectural or sorry, organic aspect and then like also these structural things. Uh, so it's an interesting combination there. And it's pretty good value too, right? 878 parts, but it's only 50 bucks. Um, so of course, a lot of them are these little leaf pieces. And if we turn around on the back, obviously there's the cherry blossom version. So a lot of those pieces are um, these frogs and the flowers as well. But I mean, where else are you gonna get this many pink frogs? So I think it's a, a good value 
for that reason alone. Um, but uh, yeah, enough of the box. Interestingly enough, this one has got punch tabs on it, even though it is a 18 and up set. Um, you know, like one of the quote unquote premium, used to call them creator expert sets. Uh, kind of odd that it doesn't have, uh, have tape on it. I guess at only $50, it didn't justify that. All right, let's uh, tilt our camera down a little so we can see what we got in here. All right, so, well, that looks like that is the base. Oh, I suppose that could be the tree. No, yeah, it's like the base. There are some leaves. There we go, there's all those beautiful pink frogs. And then, of course, the white leaves as well. Got, uh, what is this? Is this the zipline piece? I forget exactly which one it is because it's the zipline, but a nice rubbery brown piece there. And then now we've got our teal brick separator. And this looks like this is going to be like the flower pot, I guess. And that looks like that's going to be the actual tree. Oh, and then bag three is the dirt. Gotta have some good soil. And then, of course, the, uh, the instruction manual. So, six bags here. Um, I think we should definitely have plenty of time today to uh, build both sets of leaves. I think I wanna display it with the cherry blossoms. So we'll build the uh, green ones first and show off that and then switch over to the cherry blossoms. Teal brick separator. I actually took some time to empty the brick separator cup a little bit. So we got, got some space in there to build some more sets and get some more brick separators. I should probably open the instruction manual. No, I should just do it all by looking at the, uh, the box. I've done that before, not with a set this big though. All right, let's see what we've got on our instructions. Very dark um, instructions here. You can hardly even see the pot. It's not necessar necessarily a fan of that product shot there. Oh, and there he is, the man himself, brick thing. So the art of bonsai. So it talks about uh, the art of growing miniature trees and decorative pots originated in China, um, but then moved over to Japan. Growing up in New Zealand, Lego designer Nicholas Voss always loved trees and plants, but admits to be pretty bad at looking after them. Luckily, he's much better at creating beautiful horticultural horticulture from Lego Elements. His first Lego bonsai tree was created as part of his work with the Lego Ninjago series, and since then he's become the bonsai specialist within the Lego design team. And of course, if you remember when this set came out, there was a whole thing um, about Nick and other designers sharing all these different bonsai trees. There's, a, I believe, a designer video that shows all of these different bonsai trees that uh, the designers over in Denmark made. It's pretty awesome to see all of the different varieties. All right, so there's the two different varieties. Talks a little bit about that. Plants from plants. So apparently the leaf elements, let's see, currently more than 80 Lego elements, including trees, leaves, and bushes are made from a plant-based plastic produced using sustainably, sustainably sourced sugar, sugar cane. Wow, can't talk today. Uh, so yeah, so most of the um, leaf polyethylene Parts such as these leaf elements are made, I guess, as from the sustainable sugarcane. Uh, so the polyethylene is different from the ABS that you traditionally associate with Lego parts, in that it's a uh, you know, little, not quite rubbery, but uh, not quite as rigid as ABS. So that's why we haven't quite seen that make its way um, 
to everywhere in the LEGO product line, but they're working on it, so we'll see how that goes. All right, so the first three bags, we build the base, build the trunk, put in the soil. Bag four gives us the green leaves. Bag five, the pink. And bag six gives us the base to display it on. So let's uh, go ahead and we'll set up our build camera. And switch over to this in a sec. Get to it. So yeah, I'm really, really digging the bionicle, bionicle, botanical collection. Ah, see, this is why I needed to do this build today, all right? I got, like I said on uh, social, just uh, some zen relaxing building. Obviously, if you've been tracking what's going on on the BZ Power forums, we've had a bit of downtime this past week and definitely caused a little stress in my life. So I figured, hey, I deserve to take a little break and build a set. If you have any questions about that, feel free to, to ask and I will answer. Uh, but I'm not going to go into the whole story. If, uh, if you've been following us on Discord and stuff, you've seen most of what's been going on, so no need to rehash. But anyway, botanical collection. I think that's a really cool idea. Um, I don't know, like why it's been starting to appeal to me more recently, but I, I really am starting to dig more a lot of these sets that uh, LEGO is putting out that make these just great kind of like display pieces and it's not like, as much as I love the Star Wars UCS sets, and I don't think I'm ever gonna stop loving those, but like sets like this that uh, just make a, a really great display piece, even if it wasn't like a Lego thing, right? Even if it was just like a sculpture or something of a bonsai tree or an actual bonsai tree. But like uh, like Nico, uh, I'm not much into gardening, so definitely prefer the plastic version here. So yeah, things like this, the ship in a bottle, the globe, definitely want to pick that up at some point. Um, just like, like little great, great display pieces and you can Show, to, show them to someone and be like, hey, this is Lego. Hey there, Woomy. Good to see you, bud. Yeah, I got recently I guess not too recently, but last year I remodeled my master bedroom in my house. I guess the thing that took forever was getting new furniture for said bedroom. So once that came in in December, I've been you know displaying some of those more like display focused Lego sets in there. So I've got like I said the ship in the bottle. I'll put the Fender Stratocasters in there. Um, this will probably be going in there, things like that. I just think, you know, make uh, cool display pieces. If I could justify to myself getting any of the Lego art sets, I'd probably hang up one of those on the wall, but I probably should just like make my own mosaic if I'm gonna do that. I feel like I've had enough experience making those over the years. Could probably make one that I would like better than the Lego set ones. I got some nice snot going on on the edges here of our planter. And then we're gonna be, so we 
built it up so it's a one plate difference and now we've got all of these two by two curved slopes that we'll be covering around to give it a nice finished look there. One down, 23 of those to go. How's everyone doing out there? People have a long weekend this weekend, enjoying possibly an extra day off on Monday, if your work or school provides that. At least uh, here in the US, we've got President's Day tomorrow. It's kind of a bummer um, in a little bit, because this is normally when Toy Fair is. So I actually had a reminder pop up on my calendar um, for the, my Toy Fair hotel that I had booked last year, um, but then you know, canceled because Toy Fair, of course, was canceled. So while part of me doesn't miss being in New York City in February, uh, the rest of me does miss being in New York City because I haven't been there now since 2020. being a toy fair to see all the cool stuff. Although Lego has admittedly been showing less cool stuff at Toy Fair in the past few years. So I'm not sure if when Toy Fair actually does come back, if we'll be returning. We'll have to, we'll have to see how it goes. Because that looks really nice. Cool feature there. And we'll cover that up with some plates. look. That is definitely one of the things about this set and some of the others I was talking about before is they tend to have very few studs showing in the finished model um, which you know kind of makes people do a double take if they don't know they're looking at a Lego set kind of thing. And that can be I guess a pro or a con depending on your uh, preferred design aesthetics. If this isn't for you, then it's not for you. That's perfectly okay. And the last detail on the planter are the little feet. And again, if you watch the uh, designer video, uh, Nico and Carl talk about why they went with the, the tires to give it some friction so it doesn't fall off. And uh, I feel like they picked using these teal one by one Technic beams just because they know, hey, let's, uh, let's put this in, in a different color because no one's gonna see it in the final model. And we know the, uh, the A-Foles will love it. Tires fit right on there, and so now it's you're not you're not going to slide it around much. All right, now bag two, get to start building the tree trunk. Alright, 
one thing uh, you may notice here is we've got that 4x4 turntable with these studs here. And that is going to be, so we put this uh, 6x6 round plate, you can actually put that at a slight angle. Let's see which angle is it. I think that is the, that's the angle. It will go on and it'll lock in. So it won't be able to rotate anymore. So it's always cool when like we get things a little bit off, off stud or uh, not your usual Lego geometry. going to do that in uh, an official Lego set, it would be, it would be Nico. <laughs> it's interesting, we've got uh, this light, or sorry, dark bluish gray, one by two, curve brick. I assume it's going to get covered up by uh, other things, so otherwise it kind of stands out at first. And speaking of standing out, got a teal snot bracket that I'm sure will be well hidden in the interior structure. This is the second of uh, these little espresso handle pieces that we've put in. I'm guessing those are going to be used to attach zip lines to. Well, that's nifty. This uh, little inverted arch kind of fits perfectly with that snot bracket there. and just lines up perfectly with those studs. Some beautiful Lego geometry at work. Here we go, here is some NPU. We've got these, uh, these were originally used in the Star Wars sets, I believe, um, in one of the sequel trilogy movies for the First Order Stormtroopers, it was like the riot shield. And so here, we're putting them on the bottom, basically just as a way to have these bars on here that we can then clip onto there, and there's that gray curved brick just kind of acts with a little spacer, gives it a little support. Uh, I don't think it would have moved much anyway, but that probably just adds a little bit more stability to it. Oh, there we go. I might have it all the way in. And so now not only is this uh, six by six round plate gonna be a little uh, rotated on the base, now the entire trunk is at an angle. I feel like uh, Nico just took it as a challenge to see how off stud he could uh, make a model. And this is the result. At least one that would actually get, you know, approved uh, to be sold. 
you all know that if you don't have to abide by the, uh, the rules for uh, getting onto store shelves, you can do uh, a whole lot more that fans and other builders will do on a regular basis. That attaches squarely to the base and kind of covers up this angled part. Still got some teal showing, but I'm sure we'll be covering that up in, uh, in short order. Definitely not looking like a skyscraper or a spaceship, that's for sure. So we're getting a, uh, we'll try split here using these two by two hinge plates to make a kind of equilateral triangle there for the branches, I assume, to be popping off in different directions. of the branches so this is going to be part of the base perhaps perhaps something like that and have the two branches come off at different angles here To reinforce these hinge plates down here, we're adding a couple more on the top, making sure that it is a strong joint. Well, these aren't going to go anywhere, lock it all into place. Not brackets here and are starting to build off of them since we've got quite a few of these one by two bricks with the Technic axles that I assume we're going to be attaching some of the branches to. Oh, and having all the pink frogs as the blossoms wasn't enough. We had to get a brown frog. One might even call it a chocolate frog uh, for reasons 
you know, I may or may not have for referencing a uh, certain BZ power number. But certainly not the source material that that number got the name from. All right, so I got a little uh, horn piece here. Start giving it some more organic shaping. All right, and then yeah, all this attaches onto there. Now this is obviously not a very sturdy connection right now, but you can see you got snot brackets up here. We got snot brackets down there, so clearly we can attach those across and uh, make it nice and sturdy. Close to uh, finishing the second bag here. So once I attach this piece on, that goes right there. You can see they even planned perfectly for there being a little notch here for that Technic brick. And then that locks, oh, maybe. There we go. And yeah, now this, you really have to flex it to, to get that to pop off there. So it's not going to do that in just your uh, standard wear and tear. All right. Let's uh, go ahead, put that giveaway link up. We've got some brown Maxaroni pieces. I believe those first appeared in uh, the Mickey and Minnie figure sets, um, obviously in black there. And since then they have shown up in a bunch of different colors. All right, so I'm gonna be a little picky here, right? Because one side has these little molding pinholes the other doesn't, so even though I put the axle in, I'm gonna pop that out so we can try to make sure those are facing down so they're not as apparent. Probably once we put the leaves on, you're not even gonna see them anyway. Um, but you know, OCD will be OCD. I mean, those really help uh, make it look very organic there with the way the curves are done. And if that was not enough. That's interesting. In the uh, instructions even tells us that this is the first time that these Lego vine elements have appeared in reddish brown. It's kind of cool that they actually like point that out. I've 
Got a couple of roots to build. Got a lovely Exoforce arm here. Hey there, Pohatron. How's it going? And so this root attaches to that little espresso piece. And this one goes on this little snot brick that we put in there. These root pieces were originally used as elephant trunks, perfect for slurping water. I feel like uh, Nico must have had something to do with some of these little asides that the instructions have. And then like we showed before, thanks to these little studs here, you can attach this four by four turntable, but instead of being you know, like kind of perpendicular, we can go at a slight angle and still lock in. And adjust these roots to make sure they're in. And uh, yeah, starting to look like a little tree there. All right. So um, before we open up bag three, because bag three is, um, Pretty interesting. It's gonna be a very quick build too, but we're gonna pick our first winner for today. So I'll turn off that giveaway link for now. And Makuta LaRocca, congrats. You won an elite TIE Fighter pilot buildable figure. So uh, keep an eye peeled on your email and we'll get you that. All right, and so now for bag three, you can see that there are several different colors of these one by one round tiles, and the instructions literally tell you just to put it all in one bag and shake it around. So you gotta have the right mixture of, uh, of dirt here. can see we've got like the pink flesh and it looks like dark tan in there. And here we've got olive green and uh, dark flesh color. And so just dump all that in there. If you want to be really fancy, you can roll that down a little bit. Got that all nice and mixed up. And now, and uh, yeah, if you have not watched the designer video for this set, uh, I definitely recommend you go look it up because uh, Nico and Carl are pretty great with some like very dry humor um, in their delivery as they, they talk about things like the, the soil here and getting the, the right mixture and I'm making a mess of it. This is why I'm not a gardener. <laughs> so you can't even keep the Lego dirt in the pot. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the uh, the ship in a bottle, right? Where it has all those transparent water pieces that you just kind of dump in there. Oh, this has the added thing of a uh, much smaller area you're trying to get it into. Also, you have to mix them all up. And that is a funny thing, right? There's four different colors here. And, uh, you know, normally you'd get like an extra one of each color. 
but because of the way the, the instructions um, are, right, you don't even know how many of these you get. I mean, I'm sure in the back there's an inventory, um, but then I'm sure if you counted it, it'd be one more. So there we go. That was bag three. It would have been even faster if I hadn't made such a, a mess so many times. Um, now we have the choice of doing either the green leaves or the pink and white. Uh, so we are going to start with the green leaves, see how that looks, and then we'll build the pink leaves and replace that. So I do have a feeling there's going to be a, a bit of repetition here um, in building these leaves, but you know, this is one of those sets where you don't really have to be very exact about it, right? Because you want it to look organic. Pull back a little bit there so you get a better view. So here we go. Here are some of those plants from plants pieces. Like I said, polyethylene. So, you know, they've got that flex to them. Um, if you've used these pieces in any like large creations, you know that they aren't necessarily the most sturdy. Um, if you saw the Endor, which later turned into Le Coro collaboration uh, that we did, BZ Power and Bonalog did a few years ago, we had a lot of these pieces. I don't know that they, I don't think they were the the, pot, the sugar cane based ones. I think it was the old school polyethylene, but chemically they're identical. Uh, so all the same properties. But if you attach these just by like one stud, like clamp it into something, um, and then flex this enough, this stud will break off. A little unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. Um, not much you can do with the properties of the polyethylene there, unfortunately. So just keep that in mind and treat your, uh, treat your plants gently. All right, so there's our first branch here. All right, yeah, now we're doing three of the same thing. So we will move that off to the side. Can stare at that in the picture in picture. So we've got these uh, double pin axle combos with friction here. It's probably gonna attach to the maxaronis from the trunk. This is the last non-green piece in this bag. So we've done three of these bases, and now each of those bases gets three of these. <laughs> so I gotta make nine of them. Yeah, there's 
exactly how many of these units we've got. All right. One random. Oh, that's probably left over from uh, the base. Okay, just missed that. So let us sort these out. So we can get ourselves an assembly line going. We can line with these branches. Oh, I didn't even see that we have the little flower petal pieces. Is that a different line? Okay. So we're not going to be using all of these. We're not going to be using any of these leaves here. Uh huh, I see. I see. So yeah, I feel like one of the other things with these polyethylene pieces is their clutch power isn't quite the same as a normal Lego brick. Uh, so that's why we gotta kind of sandwich them in between these two one by two round plates here. So you don't have to worry about them uh, falling off on you. And since we're attaching to the, uh, the stud in the middle and not any of these edge ones, you don't have to worry about them breaking off, like I was talking about earlier. All right, so we're going to attach these to all of the branches here. Uh, we're not going to attach them to the tree just yet because the next step is taking all these little leaves and putting them on these bigger leaves. We're gonna do that before we attach them, so we have a little bit more ease of access. We're not like breaking stuff off as we try to pop the leaves on. All right, so I'm gonna do one, and then we got 33 of these, and 10 of these are one by one round flowers. So I'm gonna do one and then pretty much just do the others identically. It looks like that is how they're done in the, uh, the instructions. Um, obviously you don't have to worry too much about like, you know, lining everything up on the studs properly. Um, so, okay, you're trying to, trying to go for the organic look. But like I said before, sometimes uh, OCD is gonna OCD. Actually, I didn't even have to put these branches on here because they're all identical on each bow for each branch. I mean, of 
course, if you don't want them to be identical, you can do whatever you want. Make it your own. So before we attach it, you can see this top bow here can kind of rotate around and go up and down. And these bottom ones can go up and down. So it'll allow you to kind of adjust them to your whim. I should not have attached the leaves to the branches first. Live and learn. Some someone? Right, now we need some over on here. But yeah, I still have three extra. Which is like a perfect number to tell me that like I absolutely miss like putting them on one one section on one of these. I got one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. No. So three, six, nine, eighteen, twenty seven. 28, 29, 30. Where do the other three leaves go? see it in one of the three branches in the instructions but they actually put one in between the studs in there makes me wonder if they're trying to get you to not follow the instructions by being like hey here's a bunch of leaves just kind of put them wherever Right. 
And now, by virtue of the friction, Technic pin can rotate these around. the tree your own it looks lovely and you don't even have to water it oh and that was a uh, that was bag four so I guess we're due another giveaway Kind of snuck up on me, I guess, with all the repetition and how quick bag three was. All right, so put that giveaway link up. We'll go ahead and open up bag five, and then we'll pick our second winner. Just blazing through the stream today. 878 pieces. Oh, look at all the pink frogs. Yet another fun joke in the designer video. Right, I'm not even gonna bother dumping these out just yet until we need them. No need to mix them in with the other parts. Paleo Bricks, congratulations. You've won a Kylo Ren buildable figure. So of course we will uh, get in touch and get you that prize. All right, so we're gonna move you out of the way. Sit you right there. In the picture in picture, and we are gonna start working on our Cherry blossom branches. I'm sorting through here, trying to find all the brown pieces. Should probably just have taken out the leaves, the white leaves, that would be easier. So instead, Sorted out the brown pieces and then dumped out the white leaves. All right. All right, so we got one basic branch. All right, there's gonna be that one small one in the middle, just like with the green ones. We'll never be able to see them as anything else now, thanks to Nick. Colorful blossoms on this tree 
are actually frog elements from earlier Lego sets. I would have never guessed. This is the first time these frogs have been seen in this light purple color. Guys, I know Danish doesn't have a word for pink, but this is pink. And that is 100% uh, true, by the way. If you ever look at like official Lego colors and you wonder why all the pinks refer, like are officially called like magenta or like lightish reddish violet or whatever it is, um, that's because from what I've heard anecdotally, the Danish language does not have a word for pink. So all those color names are you know, Danish translated to English pretty much. With 101 frogs available, this is the greatest number of frogs used in any single Lego set. Yeah, that does not surprise me. All right, so there are our branch bases. I have to make the bows. So just like before, there's gonna have to be nine of these.
And just think, after we're done making all of these, then we get to build the stand for it. I think it's kind of nice that, like, after all of this repetition we're doing, there's still going to be some more interesting building stuff to finish us out. in here. flowers. Now it's time to frog them up. So pretty much each of these has four um, leaf elements. And each leaf gets two frogs. Um, and I'll go in the same spot on each leaf. So I'm just doing one set of frogs on each. 
each one. And I'll go back and do the second set. This way I just know exactly which uh, stud to attach these to. Next batch of frogs. Where do these ones go? Right, same thing. I'll go on the same stud on each leaf piece. And then after all that, one goes on the center stud as well. doesn't want to stay on. Alright. Now for the last batch. Oh, blossoms.
attach them all to the branches. So these have a little bit less hose ability than the green ones. Well, I guess you can move these around. Um, so that gives you a little bit more hose ability. And by default, you're kind of locked in on the sides. And just the top, that can hose a little bit. Attach it to our tree here. So, hopefully, it's really, oh wow, there I am. Just pop right off. See, it's really easy to prune this bonsai. Much easier than an actual one. Cherry blossoms. Beautiful. I definitely think this is going to be the way, the way I'm going to display it. At least for the time being. All right, so I'll move that off over to there. And grab our final bag. Perhaps some slightly more boring colors than the, uh, the whites and pinks there. appreciating that uh, you can see in the instructions we're doing kind of like a one and a half of the uh, the base and doing two of it and we can rotate it and attach them to each other that's kind of a cool technique there wouldn't mind seeing uh, Lego do in other sets Guys, we know how rotational symmetry works, we swear.
All right. Turn to it. Now you've got these. Let me spin them around. And look at that. Lego believes that we can do it. They believe in us, guys. Thank you, Laruka. I do think that the uh, yeah the cherry blossoms look quite lovely. Oh, we got twenty-eight jumper plates that we need to get the. Uh, offsets, I guess, for the little slats that are gonna go across here. I'm not even bothering counting. If there's more than 28 jumpers in here, it is not that much more. Thirteen, lucky number thirteen slats that are gonna go across here. I'm not gonna worry about attaching them right away. I can do that later. Again, going for a very low stud T 
to no stud aesthetic here. It looks really, really slick. I think it looks like it could be made out of wood almost. Not if it wasn't so shiny. I guess if you use a polyurethane, you get wood looking this good, but you'd still be able to see the green. To make the legs. It's looking like I should go and put up that giveaway link because I've got one more set to give away. Almost going to be out of time in which to do it. There you go, and thanks to those little rubber tires on here, that's not going to slip around. Alright, at the very end here, keep on growing. Unlike other art forms, a Lego bonsai tree is never complete, but is instead an ongoing dynamic masterpiece. Once you have mastered the first two varieties of Lego bonsai, we hope you will want to branch out and create your own individual version of the perfect tree. We have created this gallery to inspire you in your future building. While all the elements you see here are LEGO elements, not all of them are still available in our assortment, so hunt up your old LEGO sets and use whatever you find. So there are, I, I definitely like the brick separator tree that caught my eye right away. There we go. That one is uh, a little creepy. It's uh, a little pirate themed. And we got more. All right. Let's, uh, Move you off to the side for a sec there so we can take a look at some of these other trees. I go, got like a little mini scale, we got a mini fig bonsai. Oh, there we go. There we go. Some uh, Kakama Nuvas there. And underwater. So, yeah, some very cool designs. And then, of course, we've got the inventory. So uh, obviously there were a lot of frogs, a hundred frogs. Anything else that came uh, anywhere near that as far as piece count? Uh, each of the little one by one round tiles for the, uh, the dirt, you get 50 of those. So that's four different colors. So that's pretty, pretty decent there. Get a lot of the, uh, the green leaf pieces. Uh, 33 of uh, the small one there. So yeah, some definitely there's some great pieces in here. Considering, right, this is only $50, contains 878 parts. Um, yeah, nothing, I'm gonna sneeze out there. All right, let's uh, switch over. Nope, not to that one. Switch over to here and look at our finished tree. So yeah, we get the display base, nice and solid. Um, I feel like the, the slats could probably pop up pretty easily if you're not careful. So it's not like uh, super playable, but if you're just displaying it like on a table or something, it'll be fine. And again, thanks to the rubber tires, you know, you can, I'm gonna hold my hand just in case. 
like I said, learn the lesson the hard way about this with the Colosseum. Um, but yeah, you can have a pretty high coefficient of friction, if you remember from your physics classes. Uh, of course, you do have to watch out for spilling the one by one round tiles here. And I do feel like that's gonna be a little bit, bit of a pain when it comes to cleaning. Um, I, I like using those compressed air cans, uh, which of course you should recycle after you're done with. Um, I like using those to dust off my sets and I, I would be a little concerned that I'm gonna blow out some of these soil pieces with that. Um, but uh, otherwise, it should, should be pretty straightforward to, uh, to keep on display. And uh, yeah, it's got some nice, you know, can kind of tweak the branches a little bit, kind of give it your own look, whatever you think is most aesthetically pleasing. And unlike an actual bonsai tree, you don't have to wait for it to grow. You can, uh, you can just play around with it to your heart's content. Get that perfect looking bonsai. And uh, if you were watching earlier, you also get the green foliage and those are pretty easy to swap on and off so it's just this little axle connection here and uh, you can then pop on one of the other ones you can even mix and match like i'm doing right now right um or or like they encourage you in the instructions build your own bonsai but i'm definitely a fan of the cherry blossoms I like the nice little burst of color that it provides. Although, yeah, the green is not, not shabby at all either. So I think either way, either one you choose, you're not gonna be disappointed. Um, it's gonna look great on display. Or like I said, you know, you get a lot of parts for a fairly, fairly low price, all things considered, right? Like, you know, we, we always say Lego is expensive and, and it certainly is. Um, but this is definitely the, uh, the exception to the rule. I feel like you get a lot of value in this set. You get two, two different versions of the tree or you get a whole bunch of uh, neat parts. All right, so we've got one more giveaway to do. Let's close things off for today. Not maybe. All right, and who is our third winner? Hey, Voxumo, congratulations. You've won a Captain Phasma buildable figure. So congrats again, Voxumo, Makuta LaRocca, and Paleo Bricks, our three winners for today. Make sure you check your email so we can uh, send you your prize. And uh, yeah, so that is gonna be it for today. Nice, quick build, very relaxing. Um, a little repetitive in the branches, but um, you know, once you kind of build that, and you don't have to follow the instructions for the, for the branches, right? If you wanna have it more organic, uh, more random, you can certainly do that as well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I, I definitely enjoyed it. Looking forward to putting it on display. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. We'll uh, be back in another live build in a couple of weeks, probably. Um, I've got a few, few sets still in my personal queue, and uh, we did request some from Lego. They have not shown up yet, but hopefully those do. And uh, if they do, those will take priority, and we'll have some uh, cool, more recent Lego sets to build. And uh, with this, I'm gonna finish up our stream, upload it onto YouTube, and then get back to uh, to working on BZ Power and hopefully we can get those forms back online. So thank you all. Have a great rest of your weekend. If you have tomorrow off, enjoy your President's Day holiday, and we'll catch you all next time. Take care, guys.